In this video, we're going to focus on understanding the object destructuring. And object destructuring in relationship with charge.js is very, very important for many of my other videos. So this separate video explains this. And basically what we're going to do is we have this object here. And we're going to explore what this truly means and how you can use that in your advantage. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's look at understanding the object destructuring in Chart.js. And just a quick note, object destructuring can be used for any item related to JavaScript or all, all kind of objects. But I'm going to do it in the context of Chart.js because most of my examples are going to this. So the first thing what I want to do here is to get a default code so we can start to play around with that. So make sure you go to chartjs3.com getting started or this specific link here. And uh, you can find this link as well in the description box. Once you're on the site, scroll down and copy this chunk of code here. Copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste all of this in here. And once I did that, I'm going to cut out this title here. Just put it in here quickly. Save and then refresh. And now we have a bar chart. So what I want to do here now is to work with the objects and just to look at it, this data here is basically an object. It's a constant with this query basis indicating it's an object and an object has multiple values within itself. And the same here, the config is an object and this one here is the complete object. This is a chart object, but also consists of this object and the other object. They're all within this big object here. This is very important. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you two ways that you can use objects. So I'm going to do first the basic one that is outside of the chart here where we can easily use this constant here. So for example, I want to copy this. Let me show you here a console log. I'm going to grab this, save this, and then refresh. And open up the developer tab and let's refresh one more time. All right, so now we have this here. You can see here we get all this information here. And this is just everything, including configs, and as you can see here, all the configuration information, we have all the data. If you go down here, we have here the data object, and we can see here the data sets and then all the information here. So imagine this, if you want to grab, for example, a certain value, for example, here the chart area. And if you want to understand the chart area, I have a video about that, understanding the chart area, which is a very useful one as well. But for example, we're gonna get the bottom here. This bottom value is 261. And to do this by default is by doing here, you have this chart area dot and a bottom. And then for and to be more specific, we started my chart. So if I want to grab the chart area value, we're going to say this my chart dot my, um, chart area. As you can see, that's the namespace and then dot the bottom. If I save this, refresh, you can see here we get 261 plus. And you can see here if I go here to chart area. 261 plus. So this might be wonderful, but there is a downside with this is that sometimes the uh, the namespace is very extensive, especially if you're going down here, you can see here we can go deeper and deeper, or well, in this case not, but certain items here, you will go extremely deep. And as we go deeper, it might confuse us. So what we want to do is to simplify that, especially if you use multiple times. So how do we simplify this? So what we're going to do is what we call a shorthand. We're going to set, instead of this entire text, I just want to say bottom. I want to say, if I would just say here, console log bottom, then I want to grab the same value. If I save this now and refresh, right now, this doesn't work because it's not defined. So what I'm going to do is, in this object, basically I will say, I will split them out or tear them apart and say, every specific value that I want will have a specific constant variable so that I can use as a shorthand. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say here constant and then here curly braces equal my chart. So basically we're going to say this is the object and we're going to destructure it or basically tear it apart in such a way that we can use a shorthand. So how do we do this? Well we have this and remember this is the namespace location. So we're going to say here first of all it will be chart area and then column, and then we can say here specifically, you can do one or multiple, but let's say your bottom. And then if I save this now, now I'm allowed to use the bottom as a, a shorthand here. If I save this, refresh, you can see the error is gone, and now we have these values here. Wonderful. All right, so that is one part. But of course, 
not have a problem. What if we would be within here? How would we be able to use this? Because we're not allowed to use my chart in that case. All right, so let me show you. So the first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plugin here and I'll go very fast. But if you want to understand how to create just the basics of the plugin, what I'm doing, I have another video I'm going to recommend you to watch that one. It's called Understanding Creating the Plugin Basics. So comma here. Now I'm going to say here, this is within the options. Enter and then we say plugins. And here, let's say here, basic plugin. We will do nothing fancy here. The goal here is the uh, uh, object destructuring. So we're going to copy this. Slash slash here, plugin block. And then we're going to say a constant basic plugin, which is basically, or what I'm doing here is, this here is creating the object itself. So we're referring to this object, which is quite interesting. So then here, we're going to put in this. I'll just do it like that. And then here we have the uh, timing of the chart. I want to say after draw. And then here, three different objects. These objects here is important. We have one, it's called chart. Another one is called arguments. And then finally, we have here the options or what we can use plugin option. The first one refers to the chart. And this one is directly linked with this variable here. So basically, it's the chart object. So if I do here now, curly braces, and I say here console log. And then just log this chart here. If we save this, you will see it will be identical with this one here. Let's refresh. And you can see here it becomes identical. But of course, due to the animation, it loads multiple times. If I click on one, you will see exactly the same things. Let me have here again the chart area. And let's grab again the bottom here. So how do we do this? Well, in here, we have the console log. We're going to do again a object destructuring we're going to say a constant then curly braces then now instead of my chart we're going to use here the chart because we're now within the object of my chart so we cannot use this as a reference or else we get an error that makes sense of course so then in here we can just do exactly the same let's say a chart area dot and then oh, sorry not dot column and yep bottom so now if I do here now console log, say bottom, save, refresh. All right, and there you, there you have it. You can see here the same value. If I would remove this and then save, refresh. All right, so it still works apparently. Interesting. Maybe it's because of this. So I'm going to move this, save, refresh. So now we get an error. Why? Because the object or the constant that we have defined here as bottom doesn't exist. So this is basically the way you can do it. And of course, you could do your more top, bottom, and you have left and right. If I save this, and I could do here, for example, another one. Let's put the top, save, refresh. And now we get two values here. So this is how you can use object destructuring. And by the way, if you want to understand the chart area, I have a separate video for that. I'm going to recommend you as well to watch. So if you want to understand the chart area, I'm going to recommend you this video, Understanding Chart Area in Chart.js, which the link should pop up on the screen right now and will show you exactly what all those chart area variables mean. Very useful to know as well.